you've been watching my content for the last few years, there's one thing about me you probably figured out, and that's that I like animals more than your average person. I guess that's just how I was made. Uh, just feel a, a different connection with them. Uh, primarily dogs, but it, not just dogs, all animals. You know, I, I think they are just as worthy of having life as we are, if not more sometimes. Uh, animals have the same behaviors, and unless something's physically or mentally wrong with them, you know, they don't, they don't change from who they are. They don't, they don't get greedy. They don't want more. They just want what they need. And that's where we are different than animals. So look at, you know, I always get up. I look at the news. Uh, I don't know. I look at YouTube. This, this video came up and these people honestly think they honestly think that they're, uh, <laughs> they haven't stopped and thought. That's the problem. Uh, you know the situation. Somebody builds a house, say like where I'm at, in the middle of a forest, okay? I see this here. Even people that have lived here all their life, they'll see a bear and start freaking out. Oh, my God, it's a bear. It's a bear. Yeah, he lives here. This is his home. You put up a bunch of sticks in the middle of his home. So don't complain when you see one of the animals that are living in the forest. Where do you want them to live? Do you want to get them a condo in Denver? They don't got anywhere else to be. But this one, this kind of thing really gets me uh, because they just feel that you know, how dare, how dare these, this wildlife impede on our lives like this? Well, let's check out the video real quick and you'll see what I mean. We'll play, play a minute or two of this. Um, and it's in one of the Thailand, you know, a lot of those countries over there are so overpopulated. It's not even funny. They're all crammed. I mean, crammed. In these little neighborhoods with these god awful looking high rises. Uh, I'm not to judge how anybody lives, but when you build in the middle of a jungle, hey man, you're going to get jungle animals. All right, let's look at the video here real quick. All right. It's in Thailand. The monkeys have wreaked havoc on their lives. So they're catching them. คือในความฉลาดเรียนรู้ของลิงก็คือว่าถ้าเกิดว่าลิงตัวอื่นเข้าไปในกรงแล้วถูกจับไปได้ลิงตัวที่ยังไม่ได้เข้ากรงก็จ
took a break, and my friend's wife seen these people feeding squirrels. It's either squirrels or chipmunks. I remember there was a lot of chipmunks there. And they would walk right up and, you know, take the French fry or whatever it was they were giving them. And these people think that's doing them squirrels good. Well, it's not. Number one, that's not part of their diet. Uh, you shouldn't feed wild animals because once they get a taste of that, it's over with. You know, they, they know. They they see you and they're, you're relate, they're relating you to good food. And, you know, animals just like uh, just like us, you know, if something tastes good, they're going to want it. And um, dogs are the worst. Uh, and I don't even think dogs taste things. They just, they like to see, they like to eat. Because I'll give something to Lily in there and it's <laughs> gone instantly. But we are getting, we are populating areas that, never had humans and you see it out west towards colorado and that you know mountain lions will come into the town and they go hunting the mountain lion well you you're tearing down his habitat you know <laughs> where do you expect them to go it just never ceases to amaze me so but not enough of us stick up for the animals. And, and you know, there's nothing that's going to be done about it. Nothing. Cities will still continue to be built. When we run out of room, we tear down more woods, put up more houses. So you're cramming them. They used to have an immense area. And so then that area starts shrinking. And then these animals got to look for some, some other sources of food. Because not only are you making their habitat smaller, uh, you're taking their food sources away, depending on what kind of trees, you know, there's certain like koala bears, they eat eucalyptus trees, you know, the rainforest and that they're tearing these down. Well, a lot of these animals never come out of the trees, but when you take the trees down, they have nothing to eat. They got to resort to other measures, but you watch these kind of videos and they're treating it like, Oh, how dare them things come in here? Well, it's their, it's their world. That's like us getting in a big giant spaceship, taking a hundred thousand of us. Bubba's with us. <laughs> we got to bring a Bubba because he'll tell people what he thinks. And we land on some other guy's planet, you know, the Shizgabites. Let's call them that. We all land and they are weak. We conquer them. Same thing. Wouldn't be any different. You know, maybe they, they live off copper shavings. That's what they eat. So we take all their copper shavings away. We make pennies. Just a scenario. That's what I would do. Well, I don't know what Bubba's doing. We got off the spaceship. That dude took off, man. He he went to go find him one of them alien girls, I think. I don't know. But not only... In, in, let's take dogs for an example, Okay. We have breeded so many breeds that never existed. You got cockapoodles, whatever they are, you know. You got dogs this big that, that, that didn't exist in the wild. So we created a lot of the problems that today we have with dogs, and now we got so many, people don't want to do anything about it, you know, and it just continues and continues, and then they blame the dog. So if we if we had a mirror to look in that would push a button and tell us all of our faults, well there wouldn't be enough room on that mirror, I'm I'm pretty sure. But it's gotten to the point there's so many people we're set in our ways that there's not gonna be you know it would have to take a cataclysmic event to wipe most of us out before any change could ever happen. Knock us back to the Stone Age. Some people don't think that's a bad scenario, you know, because the way we are now, it's just never, you know, you could boil everything down to greed. Greed is the number one problem with a human being. He wants more. He's got to have more, you know, and when you can't have it, you take it. That's the way it is. And 
I could sit on here all day, make podcasts about the solutions, but it's never going to happen. We know that. You know that. But it just gets me that, you know, and I watched much worse videos about these monkeys. These monkeys are just, they're traveling in gangs of five to 20. <laughs> and they're roll. Hey, man, bring the monkeys over here. We'll handle them. Get rid of some of these gangbangers we got. But they're coming in bands of like five to ten. Man, they, they're smart. They know if they stick together. And they're getting in cars, uh, just, you know, getting into mischief. That's what an animal does. They're like kids. They have the mentality of a kid, but they are smart, too. So they're coming into town. They're getting into people's stuff. People's getting irritated. And, and one, they were they weren't being so nice putting them in cages. They were just eliminating them. And that was sad to watch because now it's at the point they can't round them all up, you know. At least these guys were trying to round them up. I don't know where they're taking them. They better take them so far, well, really far. But it's to the point where there's so many of them that, you know, and they're, they have, were born into that. So that's what they know. Their mothers and fathers haven't taught them hey, we climb trees and we eat this fruit. Well, the fruit probably ain't there no more. So they're coming into town. These people get mad. They either eliminate them or they're hauling them away. You know, I'm for hauling them away anytime you can, but where are you putting them? If you're putting them in an environment that isn't theirs and, you know, they're not their natural, it isn't their natural habitat anymore because these monkeys grew up living on city trash. And you're Twinkies. But that's something to think about. And we are past the point of fixing any of that. That's just the reality. I mean, wake up. There's people out protesting. We got to save the trees. We got We're not saving nothing, man. We're not saving nothing. We have put our trust in the governments that do nothing. They, they don't care. All they care about... They might have maybe a year's worth of things they do, if that. Then the rest of the time they're in the office, they, they, they're worried about the next election. The governments do nothing for you. They never will. And it's only getting worse. Uh, so as far as fixing any kind of issues we got, and we created every single one of them. Every single one of them. This planet would be so healthy without us. It would be without our pollution, without our, our waste. But nothing's ever going to go back to 100 years ago. It's never going to get any better. Some things may improve, but don't don't hold your breath. So, all right, let me know what you think. What is your solution to these monkeys? We don't have to deal with them in the United States, but, hey, we don't know where they're sending them, do we? I wouldn't mind one of them monkeys in me. I could uh, hang out with Millie. If I could train one of them monkeys and get a little saddle made for Millie, wouldn't that be cool? And then Millie would probably figure out if she brought that monkey somewhere, it would get in somebody's house and steal milk bones. Oh, I can't even. I got Just stop me, man. Can you imagine if Millie had her own monkey? Millie's my dog for you new viewers. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Happy trails. Oh, yes, I want to stop recording.